You'd rather go whisper a secret to your heart that breaks you. Somebody give you the prizes that all the world covets. Incredible. It's almost the greatest human privilege that we have. Good morning. Good morning. It is a beautiful day, and again, I'm blessed to be able to see all of your beautiful faces. Today, if you haven't been with us thus far, we'll keep saying it that we've been going through 40 days of prayer. And again, if you're on lesson three, four, five, today, this is our fifth week, and we'll be talking about prayer, praying for breakthrough. And for me, going through this with our students, I said this last time I preached, the biggest thing that has stuck out for me is knowing that prayer is our declaration of dependence on God. And what I've been working on is working on being daily, this daily declaration of dependence on Him. Not letting a day go by and where I try to do it on my own, but knowing that it's God who is supporting me and giving me strength and getting me through the things that I need to do and the things that I'm going through. So before I start, let's start with a declaration of dependence and would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we so desperately need you here on this earth, Father. We go through so many struggles, problems, the good, the bad, whatever it is, Father. We need you through it all. So will your presence be here now with us here? And Father, let your word speak truth and let your word be what we see here today. Nothing else, Father. So we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, we're looking at praying through breakthrough praying for breakthrough in our lives. Whether it be we're in a stage of growth and we want to see some things different in our lives and we learn or find something new, or we're struggling and we're going through the valley, we're going through problems and trials and tribulations that stand before us. And we're praying to get through it, we're praying for breakthrough. And so I find it kind of weird. We've been doing this for a couple weeks, and it's almost like, we've, what more can I say about prayer? If I, we've been doing this for uh, five weeks, four weeks now, there's so much that we've said already that it almost feels like we're talking repetitive and we're going over and over again. And I think that's part of how we grow as Christians. Again, I was talking about doing things on this daily basis, then we need this reminder and this encouragement to keep going, to keep doing what we need to do and being faithful in prayer. And so the main verse that as I was reading that I was looking through, I found in Romans 12, 12. And it says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Now again, we're looking at being faithful in our prayer. Focusing and being able to do it on a daily basis, knowing that we need him and we depend on him. And so, as I was reading and I was looking at my own prayer life and looking around at everyone around me, I came to see when I was reading through Exodus that there was so much more than we see now. Because, again, the conversations we have with God, that's our prayer. And I feel me just saying that prayer is a conversation with God isn't carrying the weight and the power that it should be. And so we're looking at Exodus, and we see Moses in chapter 19, where he goes up to the Mount Sinai, and God talks to him. He has a conversation with God. And the crazy thing is, God would tell Moses, don't let anyone else come up to the top of the mountain. 
or, or they'll die. They'll perish. Don't let them pass this boundary or they'll die. And so we see Moses was, back then, Moses was one of the few that was able to talk to God directly. And the people that knew that they stood at the bottom of the mountain and would tremble in fear and be in awe of Moses and him being able to talk to God directly. And trying to paint this picture of the God that created the earth, the God that created you and me and everything we have here, we have the ability now to talk with him. And saying, we can do this on a daily basis. Do we feel this trembling and awe when we have these conversations with him? Just as they had back in the Old Testament when they would look at Moses and see, wow, he's able to talk to God. And so a verse I want to pull up is verse, uh, Exodus 20, verses 18 to 20. And it reads, When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. And to, to feel the gravity behind who we're talking to. That prayer, if it's really this conversation with God, he's allowed us to be in re- relationship with him. He's allowed us to talk to him, the God of all and everything. And I was, as I was going through, it's so easily I find myself having a conversation, oh, I, I should pray more, and, and I maybe pray five to ten minutes that day, and and it almost feels like, okay, I prayed today, and that's the end of it. But in reality, I just spent whatever time I could talking to the God, the one true God who sent down his only son to die on the cross and save us so that we can talk to him one-on-one, personally, no matter what we're going through. He's always there. For us. And to get through this idea of how grand, and I can't even describe with words, but it still blows my mind that conversations about prayer come so casually now. It's like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll pray for you. And yes, the the sentiment is there, but the point is to to usher in this, the weight and the true power of prayer that we have. Because we're talking about praying for breakthrough. We're talking, having conversation with the God who controls everything. That has the power to change and do so what he knows is right. And so this idea of knowing that back in the day, how they would stand in awe and look at one person that was having the ability to talk to God, and now we can look at our times and where when we accept Jesus Christ and we have him as our Lord and Savior, that we have the same ability in this relationship with him. That those days, every single day, when we declare our dependence on him, that we stand in awe and we realize how amazing he is and how grand he is. And as that as the foundation and and setting the tone for today and, and what else he's shown me is to see the power and the gravity and the true weight behind praying for breakthrough. Prayer in and of itself, talking to him knowing that he's in control and he's all-powerful. And so if you have your programs, it's easy to take notes, and it's, it's there written out. If anyone's writing notes, it's there. You keep up. But the next one is when we know 
and we, we see God for who he is and being this all-encompassing, all-powerful God that we have the ability to talk to. And with praying for breakthrough, the focus isn't on us. Yes, we have our situa- situations. Yes, we have our problems. Yes, we're going through whatever it is we're going through. But the focus, again, isn't on us. The focus is on God. And we pray this with seriousness. Again, knowing who we're talking, talking to, we don't take this lightly. God gave us this gift of being able to talk to him. And so he is the focus and he is the one that we take this seriously. So in Matthew 17, 20, to put this into perspective, there was the, the disciples, Jesus had given them the ability to cast out demons. And so there was a boy who was possessed and the disciples, they couldn't cast out the demon. And they go, Jesus, uh, you gave us this ability. What, what happened? I'm, I'm, we're not able to do it anymore. And Jesus goes, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Whatever we're going through, the things that we're praying for breakthrough, yes, it requires prayer, but it requires more than that to, sh- to show and, and be serious with our prayer lives, with what we're going through and how we're going to get through it. Because at the end of this, it doesn't say, it says not only do we need to pray for what we're going through, but we also need to fast in a way where we're serious about what's going on and we're serious about asking God, please, can you help me? Can you help us get through this? Because we need you here in this moment. Fasting, we know, is abstaining from something, whether it be food and relying on God. So often we see we're going to fast from food, and so we don't eat, and we essentially starve our bodies knowing that the word that we have in front of us, the thirst and the hunger that we, we, we start to crave and we build, is fulfilled by what God has put in his word. It's the bread of life, the water, the living water. And so the seriousness is putting something aside and relying solely on him. Relying solely on God and showing we are serious about praying through this and wanting this to change and knowing that you are the one to work through us and do what needs to be done. We show how serious we are. We don't take this half-heartedly and be, God, can you, can you take me out of this situation? Can you help me with my finances? And I go out and I buy clothes that I don't need, knowing I have what I need. God, can you help me with my family? And I find myself spending very little time with my family. Am I really serious about God coming to this situation, having a breakthrough with my family, with my own finances? Am I serious in what I'm asking God? Am I serious in the conversation I'm having with the one who controls everything that's created all of us the God that has put his Holy Spirit to live and dwell inside of us so that we can have a relationship with him? Am I taking him seriously or am I just throwing up hopes and whims just seeing what will happen next? Because again, the focus is on God and we're as serious as can be and not take things lightly with the one Again, who Moses saw as in the Old Testament that we could stand in awe of and, and know that he's all-powerful and not take it lightly. So again, 
where do we stand within the midst of what we're going through and the situations that we're going through? I brought up whatever I'm going through. Sometimes I ask God, again, help me with my finances, and I find myself not saving or, or tithing enough of what I have and it's taken lightly. But there's so much more to what God is putting in front of us. And so another thing, as we look at praying for breakthrough, I found in, in James chapter 1, verses 6 to 7, 